Good morning, everybody. Ayash, Simon, thank you for this tidbit. Thought that Steve Olge might want to take a look at this. Also want to welcome our viewers from investing.com. You're now on the best FX social community webinar on the net. So today is a day for prepping in my view. Nice to meet you, Pridwal. Yes, we have people from all over the world here. Ziggy, how are you? Windsor, nice to see your handle, how are you? So this came from Simon B. Uh, the advantage of being in a community is that people wanna keep you informed with interesting insights and uh, market views. And we're looking at something here on Google that shows that interest in the stock market crash or of the stock market crash of 1929 has never been lower. So as a contrary indicator, I'm not saying that we're gonna have a crash, but uh, when our own Steve Volge is starting to take a shot up here at uh, FIB objectives reached 1.618, and I'm now beginning to see some divergence developing in the S&Ps here. So also rising wedge developing here. So we'll see, I think uh, I've seen many inflection points. I'm not sure what the market won't like tomorrow. Uh, I'm thinking maybe too strong of a number as people have become a little bit more dovish based upon certain things that the dot plots have been saying. So uh, we'll see what kind of number. I really think that trading or positioning big in front of a red event like NFP is roulette. Okay, so it's a binary outcome, at least for the first 10 minutes, half an hour, maybe several hours until things reset. Then I believe trading begins. So I think the best thing we could do is be prepared with great technical levels to take advantage of after the number. So my philosophy is not to bet on the number, be long or short prior, but to react to the number. Give me a while if you guys understand what I'm saying. Because you could go to any casino and go to a roulette table and bet black or red. Now I know a lot of traders that it doesn't bother them. Uh, so I would say perhaps if you have a position on going into it and you have a lead, you at least take a partial off and tighten up your stops and be prepared for anything and everything. So I'm looking at certain markets that are gonna interest me after the number. So Euro's uh, giving it back again here. Uh, when I look at the uh, four hour on Euro, I only see two drives, okay? I see one, I see two, uh, possibility that we're gonna wash one more time to 1650. Uh, we took advantage of a few things early this week on turnaround Tuesday. So uh, Euro pound is still favoring the Euro on, on the long side, pound on the short side. Aussie, we had the central bank activity here so uh, talked about this third drive, talked about taking it yesterday, uh, possibility that there still is one more flush here. I'll be interested in looking at the Aussie, should it go to new lows. Couldn't very well hold here. So here was your third drive, one, two, three. Uh, but into the NFP, we could get some type of stop hunt under the third drive and then turn. So uh, looking for that as a possibility, we get a strong number dollar rallies. I'd look to fade dollar strength against the Aussie. Everyone with me on that? Euro yen I thought was gonna have a shot to get back up to 3320, but uh, that's why you stay with the position and only take partials because I was thinking we could go to uh, 320 
but sure not looking like that's going to happen now. Looks like we're going to head towards objectives down towards 131. But again, the NFP, anything can happen. So uh, here's how I feel about FOMO. Let it, let it be, okay? You know, I don't worry about missing a trade. There's always another trade just around the corner. So if you miss something, don't worry about it. Just say to yourself, next, no would have, could have, should have's here in face. We have an agreement. We don't look backwards, we look forward. And man, am I looking forward to the NFP tomorrow because I'm sitting on my hands today. And as the late, great Tom Petty said, the waiting is the hardest part. So I'm going to, uh, also the gold, yeah. A couple other things that I've been eyeballing. So here's the Dixie. Dixie looks incomplete here too, right? We have one, we have two. So I'd be fading dollar strength up here too. Contrary in trade, do we get a strong number? A lot of the stuff is looking like I want to fade dollar strength. So there's a Dixie. Uh, we had a successful trade on the downside in the end. Looking for the end. Where are you, guy? Hmm. Can't trade it if you can't find it. Here it is. So tried to recover yesterday. So we caught this piece. So to at least cover half. So you never know, we could get, again, just like the dollar has two, and two can be enough, but we still could get three up here. And the gold was a decent long on the other side of it. And yesterday I was lucky and I told people basically to cover everything from the prior day. And gold came off pretty good. Trying to recover here, but we were trading 1280-ish. Anything can happen here in gold. Back over 1285, it's going to look pretty good. So again, you know, I wanted to exploit some markets in between uh, early in the week and prior to the NFP. Was able to do it here. So you know, I don't feel like I've missed anything. Uh, if gold goes rallies 20 bucks, yeah, I could say, oh Dale, I should have stayed long. I could have made 20 bucks if I only would have, I could have, and I should have, and go into some self-flagellation and some masochistic uh, tendencies and just beat myself up, but don't do that, okay? It's a waste of energy. You're gonna make yourself ill and you just need to know that it's part of the process. So we're going to miss trades every day. I miss them every day. How about you guys? You miss trades every day? But still, don't you see yourself? You're still trading, right? So it doesn't matter. Take the pressure off. Okay. Everyone promise? Give me why if you promise. Take the pressure off yourself and not beat yourself up about being perfect. You can't expect perfection at the crab table. Oh, you, thank you very much, nephew, Simon Dyke. You're a good nephew, Simon, and thank you for that Google. All right, there, there we go. People agreeing to be good to themselves. Well, I could only say this because I did it for years, for decades not worth it yeah <laughs> all right eric i know it, it it hurts so good so we have a full team here i think i uh, i think even nick is going to be by here today but i know blake and steve are here and stelios i jess so uh, yeah no yeah that's right jess so the opposite of trading with less leverage is trading with max leverage. So this is what some people do, but they're not around for a long time. Use max leverage when you trade the NFP. You could turn $10 
into 10K. But if you're wrong when you use max leverage, it won't take long before you lose your head and then your account will be dead. Don't use max leverage. <laughs> <laughs> haven't played it in so long anyway so the best thing you could do today unless you want to trade 15 minute 30 minute tfs is get prepared for tomorrow and react to the number okay marco blake you're around buddy yeah bail me. Can, you bail me, can you bail me out of this sure uh, first <laughs> of all, I, I don't know if you can i don't know if, if you can hear me okay i yeah. uh, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 uh I I lost my voice a little bit last night. I was at the uh oh my god, the copper just ripped. Holy cow. Just flying. Well, were you at a baseball game or, or Yeah, I was at the uh, the Diamondbacks uh Rockies uh, wild card game and it's you know, it's a one game Yeah. one game uh you know, um you know, uh do or die, yeah. make or break. It, and it was it was probably the best playoff game you could ever imagine um it's it was just an electric feeling it was uh wow. it was completely amazing uh hold on i'm gonna take over the charts here what's that it's so uh the diamondbacks won they did they did yeah. and it was wow. uh it, but it was it was um I, I you know it's one of those games where you know they they scored like four runs and you know and then the then 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 the Rockies came back and scored a few, and then we'd score a few more, and then they they closed the gap again, and then you know the pitchers bringing in you know RBIs. It was just it was amazing. So it was. Uh, yeah, it sounds like uh, trading. Yeah, it was a lot of back and forth, <laughs> kind of uh, <laughs> two steps forward, one step back type of thing. So yeah. unfortunately, you know, I didn't get I didn't get home till late. So this is uh by the way, this is copper. This is um everybody should be paying attention to this if you trade copper. Um, you know, the, wow. we've got a little inverted head and shoulder pattern here. You can nice see, it, uh, yeah, th this is an hourly. Um, so we got a nice little, nice little move here. And and I'm not, I don't trade copper, but for those of you guys that do, this is a breakout. So um, now, what what is also happening uh, with with copper moving is you're also seeing a move in like precious metals. So, but the rest of precious metals complex. So you got you got like here's gold. Here's silver. They're getting a little bit of a bump up as well, but futures are also moving higher. If you look at the S&P, the S&P just just is closing in on yesterday's highs. Um, so uh, you know the S&P is past that 161% extension, and even though that we're overbought, um, and even though that we've seen divergence, you have to realize that we've been seeing divergence since. The beginning of time it seems like but i mean really the 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 big divergence has been you know since since uh we we peaked back in um uh in in march and and we have just been continuing higher and uh now we're we're approaching what would be let me let me make sure that that is not channel resistance here not quite yet. We we still have some distance to go if we want to. Um, so you know the stock market still looks really bullish. Um, this is you know the dollars. The dollars had a nice rally overnight. Uh, you know, and I wanted to pull up something about the dollar here in a minute that I was just uh, I, I just um, uh, uh, was uh, reading about just a few moments ago, which I thought was a very interesting look on the dollar index. But but I'll talk about that just in a few minutes. Um, because you 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 struck a chord, not necessarily the song that you you were playing, um, but you uh, you struck a chord with the uh, with with the dollar as far as trading the dollar ahead of NFP. Now, if you look at the dollar index, the dollar index is it, it's kind of stuck. I, I I pulled this up the same chart up yesterday, but I'm gonna I want to point out kind of where we're at here. This little box. Okay, that you see, you see down here, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're capped by 94 in the dollar index, um, but we're also we're also uh, supported because we we broke this downsloping trend line. Now this is a daily chart of the dollar index, so the dollar index is kind of like suspended in midair at the moment, and really I think this this make or break of the dollar is going to be 
a result of tomorrow. So if you guys are expecting the dollar to do something crazy right now, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, you know, what we're going to, you know, how much we're going to get. We, we might get a little bit of a dollar pullback today. I mean, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, you, you know, you got the dollar bumping up a little bit here overnight. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the dollar index slips, you know, slip, slips a quarter percent or so, or it could rally a quarter percent up to, re up to resistance. Regardless, the dollar index is kind of trapped right now. And um, I, I would, I would very much, um, advise you not to get too bullish or bearish ahead of tomorrow's data um, because I think tomorrow is really going to set the pace for the dollar for the next probably in the next week or two now with that being said um, uh, Deutsche Bank's Deutsche Bank's Deutsche Bank's ugh, Deutsche Bank's head of FX research um, uh, posted this chart today and this is dollar seasonality over the last few years. Okay, now just just we're talking about fourth quarter perf um, uh, performance. Okay, so I want to I want to I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to grab my spotlight here. Okay, so you can see there's 2011, 2012, 2013, 14, 15, uh, 16. Okay, so here we are, 2017 going into the fourth quarter. So um, will we get a rally? this year like we have every other year well I mean you go you go back to 2011 and this this could be a very similar similar situation we could see a dollar pullback before rally uh, you know and, and same thing with like well you know 2012 you know 2013 they're not as prominent as that we saw in 2014 15 16 now um, that doesn't mean that fundamentals have changed or we we look at we look at um, you know we're looking at the market and saying well this this year is going to be different. There's a couple of factors that could really weigh on um, uh, we we can we can we can weigh on and and Eric just asked what who posted that chart is, the, is Deutsche Bank's FX uh, head Deutsche Bank. Um, but the but the thing that we we also should think about is if the tax plan comes together here in the US uh, now that's a big if I mean you know uh, there's still a lot of hurdles but if the if, if the tax plan comes together that's probably going to be a big swoon for the dollar and so that's I think you got to look for a catalyst to really drive the dollar higher over the course of the next you know, a few months, but what one thing that could, you know, our next month or two is actually what I'm trying to say. But the one thing that I think we should pay attention to is we should pay attention to what happens tomorrow because tomorrow could really kickstart that move. If we have a strong, if we have a strong data data point, we create a lot of jobs. And then let's say that that wage growth is really picking up. So we get two real catalysts that drive the dollar higher tomorrow. That could be the reason why that we break above 94. And if the dollar does break above 94, I mean, I personally, you, you know me, Dale, I've been bearish the dollar since inauguration night. There has been, there's been no waiver in my conviction. I have just been, you know, ever since we've, we, we we had the the inauguration. My 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 first inclination was, I know everybody expects Donald Trump. He's going to be able to push all this legislation through, but my view has always been, and it has been for the last you know eight nine months, he's just not going to be able to do it. He's not going to be able to do it, and he's going to he's going to he's not going to get the support that he thinks he needs, and which has turned out to be uh, true. And then on top of that, the Fed has stopped raising interest rates or excuse me let me take that back the fed is raising interest rates but everybody else is going to be playing catch up too and now we're starting to see other central banks tighten either whether it's rhetoric or actually starting to tighten rates um that that's happening and then as as that happens then the fed is starting to slow down hiking uh and and this year, you know, we projected so many hikes, and you know, and 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 if, the, if, the, if those numbers start to wane, that's just another thing that's going to work against the dollar. So, I, like I said, I've been very unwavering in my my um, my dollar bearishness, 
And even though we get some rallies from time to time, I'm like, you know, this is this is the place that we got to look to sell the dollar. But now at this point in time, it is it's it's a very big it's an inflection point for the dollar. We are going to either, you know, start the course of a you know maybe a when I when I'm talking a reversal and I'm talking a, you know a recovery. I'm talking, you know, maybe a move back up to 97 or something like this in the dollar index. I'm not, I'm not talking about. Talking that, buddy. Yeah, what's that? A lot of people are looking at that type of failing rally to 97. Yeah, and yeah. Then, then the next big drop. Yeah, and I mean, this, and, and if you ask like Steve or, or Gregor or anybody who's a, who's a, who, who, who is more of an Elliotitian, you know, they're going to look at this as more of an impulsive move here, which is, you know, probably really true because we, we had a false breakout. Then we've, we, we broke lower, which is typical of false breakouts. We had a false breakout and then we broke lower. Now that, that impulsive move is probably going to have ramifications in the future. So that seems like a realistic expectation, but the question is, are we even going to get that type of recovery? I think a lot of people are betting on a dollar recovery. I think this is a, this is something that, that is not, you know, it's not just us looking at it. It's everybody else is looking at it too. Obviously Deutsche Bank's head of FX research is, is, is talking about it and even look at throwing some stuff like seasonality. So those are just things to, to keep in mind, but I'm not, uh, I, think I think you read our blog buddy on the U S dollar, that Deutsche Bank guy. <laughs> He might. I, I would check it out. See if he's a subscriber. He could be. He could be, or just at least somebody who reads reads our free blog. But um, <laughs> but but the 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 thing is is I I you know technically I think we have to get above ninety four um, to really fortify that view that we've uh, we've 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 turned the corner. I mean, if you look at you know the dollar index here. And if you think about this, just even technically what we've got here, we, we could be also, you know, coming down for a couple of weeks. Let's say we have a weak number. We might come down for a couple of weeks before reversing and setting up some sort of, uh, and here, let me, let me grab a pen. Uh, you know, damn it, where'd my pen go? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, you know, we could set up some sort of uh, inverted head and shoulder pattern too. I don't like that. Yeah, phallic looking head and shoulder pattern. Um that 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 that's 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 entirely possible. Um but but you know I think you gotta be very careful. I guess what I'm trying to say is you just gotta be very, very careful at where we're at currently, you know, and just not not get too terribly excited about dollar strength as of yet. Um, one of the other things that, that I have to throw out there since we're talking about the dollar is I've got to talk about gold um, because gold is, is another, you know, piece of the puzzle, if you will. And gold has had, and, and if you look at, you know, the longer term charts in gold, okay, so let's, uh, let's go out to a weekly chart, okay? So here's gold, right? Yeah. Okay, now if you, if you guys don't notice this, this is one of the this is one of the bigger arguing points right now for me. It's like okay, I I see I I hear everybody's argument. Like okay, I, I hear I hear what you're saying, but the one thing about gold is that we have this you know this this multi year since since we peaked in gold. I mean this this is peak gold back in 2011. Okay, we have this multi year trend line that we have that without a doubt. Okay, we have taken out, right? So there's no, there's no like, um, uh, I don't know if that broke out or not. No, that broke out. That, that, that's like, that's not a, that's not a question at this point in time. We broke out and, and here we are back testing basically the, the 618 retracement. Okay. We, we've, 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 you know, almost tested the 618 retracement. How about if gold, you know, really makes a turn higher. If gold makes a turn higher, that's going to be a, a big dollar negative. Okay, so it you know that that's another thing that you know I'm not again I'm not a hundred percent convinced that the dollar is ready to turn at this point, but technically 
you know, the dollar index really has to get above 94. And, and if the dollar index gets above 94, that, that's, that's one of those, that's one of those situations where, where, you know, I'm going to say, Hey, you know, whether or not, whether or not I believe this dollar rally, you know, whether or not I can really, you know, put my faith behind it or, you know, put, you know, really start to argue the point. Technically it, it, it is recovering. So, you know, I have to respect the fact that if we get above 94 and we can, we can close above there tomorrow and, and it, and it looks like a solid breakout, then, th then that is the case. Okay. We, cause we are, we are seeing, um, you know, the pound, the pound continues to get hit. The pound got hit overnight. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I missed what Teresa May had to say, but you know, she really, uh, she really took the wind out of the cable, which, you know, I, I've, I'm playing the Euro pound to the short side. So I'm not, I'm not happy with the pound, uh, dollar at this point and, and how, it, how it's, uh, how it's dropped. I mean, we're approaching some pretty, you know, eh, we got some horizontal support down here in the 618. You can see right through here, you know, the pound might find some support, but the pound has been under pressure as well. Um, now the Euro dollar, you know, it's, it's held up. I, I, you know, I've known a, a couple traders yesterday that were trying to short the Euro dollar down here and struggling. It's, uh, it's, you know, having a difficult time. Um, you can see the Aussie dollar is nearing support. You know, we had weak retail sales, but the trade balance numbers were better than expected. So the Aussies, you know, it's coming back down to support, but it is, you know, supported the, the Kiwi right on support. The, uh, the, the, the Swissy is back up against resistance after the false breakout from the other day. I do have a, a short in the, in the uh, US dollar Swiss franc, um, but with equities rallying, risk appetite strong, you know, I'm not 100% convinced about this move either. Um, we have, you know, the dollar Canadian, which I, this one is actually quite surprising. So if you look at how the dollar has been, has been you know, recovering, look at how the dollar Canadian has just not really moved a whole lot. And I guess you could say that the same thing about the Kiwi or the Aussie, the, 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 the dollar has not been gaining ground against commodity currencies. Um, you know, the last couple of days, which is a threat to the U S dollar Canadian, because if you, you, you look longer term on the U S dollar Canadian, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get too messy here, but I guess I'll take this trend line. Let me just, and the dotted trend line is good because it 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 kind of uh, it, you know you can you can have a little bit of wiggle there and say okay well you know you know we're close or, or or you know it's it's within proximity I mean that's a that's a multi-year trend line and we're 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 basically back testing we're kind of above it right now but you know it easily easily especially with with not only non-farm payroll tomorrow but we also have Canadian Canadian. Um, we have Canadian employment data. I mean, wow. if, the, if the dollar Canadian rejects here and we get, you know, we close the week, like let's say below 124, uh, you know, we have, let, let's say we have strong Canadian data and weak dollar data. I mean, that's going to be a, you know, it's a failed rally attempt for the, uh, for, for the dollar Canadian. So um, that, that in itself, you know, that that's going to be, that's going to be nerve wracking for, for the Canadian. And my assumption is, um, for Canadian traders, that is, and my assumption is, is the uh, the, the 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 very um, strong Canadian uh, positioning that we've seen over the course of the last you know couple couple of uh, months. I'm, I'm assuming it's moderated a little bit over the last you know couple of weeks since we've been rallying back, and um, you know people have seen the dollar recover a little bit. I think I, I would assume that that dollar Canadian positioning has squared up a little bit. So that would free us up to move lower or the Canadian dollar could strengthen again. Um, should we start to, should we start to break down? So the, that's, that's just something, that's something for, for me that, that I'm also paying really close attention to. Um, by the way, do we have, uh, do we have data coming out here in a few minutes? We do have unemployment claims actually in one minute. One yeah, second, okay. guys. Oh, hey, there's Nick. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Hey, l let me, you know, I'm going to, I want to pass it over to you uh, because I know everybody loves to hear, first of all, everybody loves to hear your voice and then <laughs> way more than mine and way more than Dale's. I can guarantee you that. Um, but uh, let, let's just get through this data point really quick. We got unemployment claims and trade balance, both in the U.S. and Canada. Um, so stand by. We'll just nice for you, Blake. Blake. Thank you. Hey, you opened my eyes to a few things. 
Thank you. Okay. And, so, I, see, and I see everything. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we're getting a little bit of, uh, we're getting, you know, we're getting a little bit of dollar, dollar strengthening here. Um, we have unemployment claims that came in at, uh, trade deficit as well. Yeah. 260,000. Yeah. We had a uh, uh, trade balance coming better than this motor list. Yeah. Yeah, actually, trade balance came in a little worse than expected, but the but but unemployment came unemployment claims. They're blaming it on the hurricanes. On the trade balance. Yeah, the, on the, the, the unemployment as well. Well, you know, you know, there's the, 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 there's less people filing for unemployment, regardless of the weather. So that number should have been worse. That should have been a higher print, mm. and because it was a lower print, that's 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 what's really you know helping the dollar at the moment. You know, I think uh, everybody expected that uh, unemployment claims would probably be closer to like 300,000, but it wasn't because of all the storm. So, you know, that's good. That 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 tells us we've got a nice, healthy um, jobs picture. Now, our 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 uh, trade balance did come in a little worse than expected. So we are seeing a little bit of dollar strength here. Um, let's see, the euro dollar slipped a little. Pound, you know, was, pound's been heavy all night. Uh, Aussie, Kiwi. We had really bad data for the pound this morning, the PMI is manufactured. I think it was, it, what was it, service? I can't remember what it was, but it was pretty bad data. So, plus, well, you know. Wait, you know, did I miss that? Prime Minister, I... Yeah, Prime Minister May uh, did really badly at the Conservative Conference. So now they're talking about she's not going to be able to hang on as leader. And so, wow. a lot of stuff going on with the pound that's making it really weak. So. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, I know. I know the pound definitely is trading trading heavy, right at yeah. the moment. And uh, and I was looking. Services PMI was yesterday, but I didn't see anything on the schedule today. But that that that's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you uh, discuss that. But I hear Steve's voice. Good morning, Steve. Hi. I'll, Good I'll morning, let you Nick. Good morning, Nick. Hi. <laughs> well, um, well, I've kind of given a review about the dollar and and how I feel about the dollar. Do you have any specific views on the dollar, Nick? On, on how you feel because like I, I don't know if you no, heard what I was saying I earlier it's tricky it's a big pivot level isn't it really it could go either like it's one of those levels dollar yen euro dollar everything could go either way the only thing that's actually done anything decisive for me is the pound that's broken down on weakness and how often does the pound go the opposite direction to the other dollar majors you know quite a lot so I don't read that much into it you know I, I, so yeah, I think the dollar for me is really tricky, really tricky pivot. Yeah, uh, it, it, it is. It's one of those situations where I, I really don't know. I stocks and bonds are a little easier to say. Yeah, like I'm starting to think we see a decent bounce in um, uh, bonds and a pullback in stocks. So. Well, Even though we look super bull, I know we look ridiculously bullish, but after NFP on a weekly chart, that could just be a little spike. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, really I guess. Change the picture right after NFP, or right. it'll just blow straight through. We you know one or the other. You know, here's here's one of the here's the one other things that and 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 we're you know we're talking about bonds and you know here's the here's the uh, here's the the the, the ten year which is a little weak and I, I don't know why all my uh, I don't know where all my um, where all my views of the the on, on my bond market went, you know, maybe I have it all drawn. Oh, here we go. Um, but the the one thing that that I guess we, we can that I need to mention about about NFP is, you know, at this stage in the game, is non-farm payroll, is that just going to lend a hand to continued stock market strength no matter what the outcome? Because if you get if you get a weak data point, people are going to say, "Oh, well, you know, the Fed's going to the Fed's going to continue to keep, you know, keep uh, rates low, so therefore the the stock market is going to continue to rally." And you know, then then they they always argue they always argue, "Well, if it's a strong number, well, that's that's good for the U.S. economy, so it's it you know the stock market will continue to go up." So I still can't, I don't I don't see that argument coming to fruition just yet. Uh, I haven't seen, I don't think we've seen the dollar respond negatively on an NFP day. Um, in the longest time, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are you guys there? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, just but we definitely know what you're saying. Sorry. Ah, 
I think Nick is here. But we have had, Blake, we have had, um, as you said, the vast majority of responses to NFPs has been positive, but uh, very often we've had reversals like the next day. So, you know, that's also something to watch, that perhaps another push higher during the NFPs is definitely not to be bought, but perhaps to be faded. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. Well, hey, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna pass it over to you uh, guys. Uh, Nick, are there some charts that you want to show this uh, today to the uh, to the viewers? And I know we've got. I, I know you love to talk cryptos, and I also know that uh, that we have uh, we have a lot of people from Investing.com that probably aren't familiar with who you are in particular. Do you want to uh, do you want to take over, Do you want the charts? We lost Nick there. Uh, I think she's muted for some reason. Yeah, the euro sterling, oh, yes, which for me is. is a bullish. Um, I was looking at the euro sterling, which for me is bullish continuation, carrying on the uptrend on this move today. The euro sterling, I think, is quite interesting. I'm looking for new highs in that, that one, 95.95. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, here I'm. No, I'm going to pass it over to you because now I want to hear what you have to say. So, um, so let's let's see. I, I just passed you the charts because I want to hear and see what you're, you're looking at. Okay, I don't think it let me choose which screen, so we're probably going to end up with the wrong screen. Oh. Hi, Nick. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Well, apart from moving house, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay, you for Can you see my in. charts? Yeah, we got them. Yes, we can see him. Okay, so let's just quickly pop to the weekly of this euro pound sterling and I'll clean up some of these moving averages. And and you can see that we, we if we take the rally from the 2015 low, we've really just hit the 23.6 fib here and carrying on. For me, that's like the Fibonacci trend continuation. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we continue higher here. My 886 bat pattern you know, um, target is a little bit higher here at 95, and then other, otherwise I think we retest the highs at 9.98. It really likes to do that, but the euro pound for me always will go to an 886 if it can. It just kind of really likes those um, fib levels. So that'd be a third drive up there, Nick. Yeah. Like exactly. we were talking the other day. Yeah. Yeah. So you know. It. Yeah. We'll see what we'll say, like if it goes more than 50%, so at the moment we're bouncing from the big decline that we've had. I, I think if we go um, higher than 50%, which is about 92.73, then we should continue to new highs. If we stall there, then this is just the first leg right. in, a, in a bigger ABC. So that's where I'm looking uh, for a target for this rally. And, and where we'll decide what we do next around 92.73. So I'm just keeping it really simple with 50%. Um, I think if uh, stuff really kicks off in Spain, that the euro might take a bit of a hit too. So uh, that's what I'd be watching for in that one. What's your guess, Nick? And I'm assuming that if we are going higher to take out that recent peak, uh, that you believe it's going to be more about cable weakness than euro strength. Am I correct? Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think that the um, the Conservative Party conference went really badly for Theresa May, and um, I I'm not sure how much longer she'll last as leader. And I think some uncertainty around that will keep people out of the pound. Yeah, I was going to say. So you know, there's 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 people that are that believe that she could she could resign by Friday. So I mean, if that is the case. I mean that's tomorrow. Nick, please, Nick, please don't replace her as prime minister. We like your harmonics. <laughs> right? Okay, Nick. I'll try, but um, and there's just Nick. yeah, there's, yes. Hi. I I don't think we can disagree that Theresa May, one way or another, is not really gifted as a politician, right? I mean, um, I've I've heard her speak plenty of times, and she, she she's honestly an impressive, and even the few political moves that she had the time to take, I would say that the vast majority of them were you know, it's not great. No, they <laughs> the were not great at all, yeah. Yeah, not counting the election, the idea of having elections, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. So, so this is, um, I'm looking at the 30-year bond rather than the 10-year uh, bond here. And I'm looking at, so th this is a monthly chart. I'm going to start, sorry, a weekly chart. 
So for me, the bonds are the decider for dollar yen and the yen crosses and the 30 year has pulled back to 50% of the rally um, from the start of the year. So from the, this year's low to highs, we're at the 50%, we're at the weekly 200 moving average in this 30-year um, bond. And if I go down to the daily, it's quite a similar, um, I just think we're at a pretty key, this is the 200 daily moving average as well. And you know, we're kind of, I just need to move this, we're at 1.618 of this corrective rally in the middle. So there's a lot of, in this zone, you know, between 152 and 152.16, there's a lot of support for the 30-year bond. We've had five days sitting upon this level. So I would not be surprised, like it's gonna go one way or the other, but for me, it would not be a surprise if we went higher in this in this, and, and therefore lower in dollar yen. So I've been, this is what I've been looking at. It's also like a good, you know, prior support a lot of support and resistance here in the 30-year bond. So that's what I'm looking at for the yen crosses. So yen crosses and dollar yen lower for me, I think, but we have to get non-farm payroll out of the way. Um, so that's that's uh, my primary other favorite chart today. I hope you can hear me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I have to say, I'm a little set back with your, uh, with your, your, old, pound, your old pound analysis. Now I'm okay, you're speechless. <laughs> No, no, no. I think, you know, it could just it could just go 50 percent. You know, who what's going to kick off first? You know, trouble in Catalonia or, or, or trouble with Theresa May? You know, there, we, there are some quite uh, there are some potential tape bombs for Europan, let's be honest. <laughs> so, you know, if I, if I may add yeah, just one sure. little thing. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's funny how people keep saying, oh, Theresa May's leadership is not strong. And they're right. But then again, if, if there's a potential of her leaving somebody else replacing her, that's even that's again bad. So you you know the market can have it both ways. Now Theresa May being there is, is weak, but her not being there is also weak. You know it, there has to be something. But anyway, exactly. it just um, it feels like the market wants to be selling the pound no matter what for the past you know since, yeah. since the referendum really. So so yeah, uh, I so I'm on. I'm on the other side, actually. I, I am long-term bullish the pound, but you're right. You know, there might be, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, a move against it. I mean, who knows? Who knows? If we look anyway. at the if we look at the pound against the Aussie dollar, um, we've pulled off, you know, but we could just as easily make a big head and shoulders pattern. We're in a rising channel in this pound against the Aussie dollar. Um, so I'm not sure how far we come back in this one. We might just come back. To this 200 day moving average and these prior lows and highs and find some support here and continue higher in the pound Aussie either way I think that that's where we're coming back to so this is quite a nice short trade in the pound Kiwi is quite a nice short trade as well uh, that's the other other one I was looking at with relation to the pound I'm just going to clean up yeah that yeah. broke down pretty good Leading yeah this, so I had this as a, a back pattern a harmonic back pattern and this is the reversal that I was looking for. And I think, yeah, back to these, at least back to these highs or back to the 200 day in this one would be a, a really nice um, a trade too. So pound against those continent, those commodity currencies, I think is quite uh, an interesting trade too. So yeah, those Thank are my you. favorite looks for today. <laughs> Thank you very much. And and uh and, and I'm sure Steve he's got some analysis he's got to cover. And Dale Yeah, no, Steve's got lots, so I'll be listening. Yeah, I was I was gonna say, Dale, um uh, you, you have a guest coming in today. Yes, uh, Chris Lemieux. Okay, so we, 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 we have we have um you know about fifteen minutes to let Steve uh Steve had a really great chart. Uh, about uh, about European bond yields that I think needs to be discussed. But uh, Nick, before you go, um, Joe had a comment about uh, about one of your uh, harmonic uploads. So just uh, read read the comments in our in our uh, in our comment chat. Oh yeah, I, I'm not able to read the audience comments, but no, uh... the, the ones the ones in our the one the ones in oh. our um, in our on our Skype chat. Oh yes, we'll do. Yes. Okay. Cool. Just, just, uh, just some housekeeping. Thank you so much, Nick. Bye. Steve, you want to show that chart? Thank you, you Nick. Have? Good hunting, yeah, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which, which screen am I showing? You're not showing any at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Who am I? 
Let me grab the screen. Okay. When you don't know what screen you're showing, you're having an identity crisis, buddy. Yeah, this is an interesting chart which shows how, how yeah. frothy things have become wow. in all aspects, right? Wow. Yeah. This, yeah, this is the, uh, the yield of Euro junk bonds, which a lot of great like, bonds in there, huh? Like, like yesterday, uh, yesterday fell below uh, the U.S. Treasury 10 year. Yep. Wow. So you understand that when people beat up junk bonds, which you can see, just just look at the spread during the financial uh -huh. crisis, right? They were yielding like 25%. Yeah. And, you know, the, the treasuries were roughly where they are at the moment. And this spread has closed down from let's call it 22 23 percent was the spread to negative at the moment so you know when you when you yeah. see these kind of imbalances in the system you know that something is not going well <laughs> i want to get on that spread how do you do it <laughs> uh, actually mm, yeah um, th there are a lot of ways to do that but synthetically okay yeah, so, you know, um, this is another indication that... Boy, is that uh, Disneyland? Is that ever Disneyland? Yeah, exactly. Is that Disneyland? Yes, it is. You know what I mean? It is. Now, having to do with the pound, it's obviously, you know, um, it's obviously accelerating lower. So now several other interpretations which look like more impulsive are, uh, you know, on the table. I know because, you know, we, we've been talking about it and... Um, it was my uh, only dollar um, uh, short heads, which obviously ended up not being a good one. I mean, I could have selected a better one. Um, every other position I have is um, along the dollar except this one, and I'm, I'm probably going to get rid of it. And probably I'm going to take profits on the dollar positions as well ahead of the NFPs and see what happens next week. The next support I have for the pound is at 130. So, you know, we don't seem to, to be having much. Uh, we're currently at the 50 DMA. Uh, the 61.8 is, is quite close. So obviously this, this should prove enough to provide some kind of a support, uh, perhaps intraday. Uh, but especially if we get good NFPs, I think the, that getting down to 130 is uh, more or less inevitable. Now having to do with the Euro pound, since Nick mentioned it, I, I'm, still, I'm still short and in the money, not convinced that this is not more than uh, than a correction we are actually currently testing like a very nice uh, very interesting zone um because it was support resistance in the past so I'm, I'm looking to see what kind of a reaction we can get from there i had said in advance that we might actually go higher before moving lower um and and we're doing so now so i'm i'm, I'm not ready to quit this uh, this position and take profits yet i think it's uh, i think it should have one more push uh, lower towards the 61.8 here and um, you know, I'm I'm not going to be um, um, I'm I'm not going to be convinced unless I see some real strength towards you know 90. Um, so we we've already had a nice five-day recovery, which yeah, of course it's something to uh, to mind. And at some point we're going to get some little pullback, let's say from there. So then I want to see what happens with this zone. If we actually break again below this zone then I'm going to be convinced, you know, that we're going there. If if we do something like this, and then we hold this zone and start showing some strength again, then I'm going to just book my profits and uh, quit because then the scenario Nick is mentioning uh, ca can actually, you know, play out. But until then, you know, I'm uh, I'm I'm remaining uh, short and a little bit skeptical of uh, of this strength. As Nick said, you know, there are a lot of tape bombs that can come, but Let's uh, let's also keep in mind that the situation in Catalonia is still still seems to be escalating, while the euro at the same time is almost um, passive to this. I think the market shows that they still don't believe that this is going to end up being an issue, and you know this can prove to be. Um, a little bit of a black swan in, in the sense that the market doesn't seem to be believing in uh, in it creating you know some big fuss, uh, but uh, it, it actually has the potential. So if that happens, especially if we if we see during the weekend any 
um, any developments, you know, we can easily uh, get, you know, the final push we need towards like uh, this support resistance area at 114.50. Um, and, you know, if you see it from a daily perspective, the move lower in the euro, yeah, hasn't been like, you know, very strong or impulsive. But on the other hand, this recent consolidation here, you, you can't call this bullish as well. You know what I mean? It, it, it seems heavy and um, I don't know, on the day, daily chart, especially if today closes as I see it, it seems to me like, you know, the euro wants to at least make one more push lower. Of course, ahead of the NFPs, you know, anything we say, uh, you know, can, 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 can prove to be um, of little value uh, simply because, yeah, obviously, if we, got, if, we, if we get a very strong NFP print tomorrow, uh, you know, the dollar itself uh, as being one of the two currency pair in, in the euro USD can uh, actually, um, uh, you know, re reverse euro and um, uh, to take it higher if it's weak or uh, can definitely, you know, give that uh, push and uh, push it lower along or even irrespectively of what happens with Catalonia. So um, obviously, you know, we, we see this little formation here. We know where the resistance is. It's at 118.50 to 60, 70, somewhere like this. I mean, this is a resistance area that's very important. So we know that this place is resistance. And we know in, in the downside that uh, you know, after the uh, 1662, which is uh, this low that we had here, then the next level that that um, that comes into play is uh, that that's critical is this 150, 114.50. So I really think that if we break below this low there, uh, one way or another, we we, we are going to test uh, this area. Um, as I said before, I would be very very careful being long at the moment. I understand all the arguments. We had a shallow recovery, I mean, um, correction. And, you know, there is no doubt that the euro has been in a very, very strong uptrend. But that's not uh, going to change even if we go all the way down there. So, uh, you know, I, I would be very careful with the euro, especially now that we also have the Catalonia situation. Now, on the other hand, the Aussie had a two-day recovery and today seems to be resuming lower. I'm going to be keeping this uh, for now because it's one of the pairs that play out, uh, you know, uh, better than expected. The Kiwi is not a fast mover, but it is still grinding lower. Uh, although we're coming very close to testing this 71.30 low, uh, for me, um, uh, you know, a push below this uh, is going to be um, you know, the, the, the final verification that this pattern that I was looking for, like move lower, uh, three wave corrective, move higher, uh, that it is, is indeed going to have at least one leg lower, which even if we count the quality target, you know, from this move to that high and this move down, it, it, it shows that, you know, we, we, we at least have some more downside. Actually, let's, let's do that right now. Let's check the extension and see what we get. So even if, there it is, the target is at 70, 0 70, okay? Uh, a little bit lower, we also have support resistance area. So I think that uh, a close below there, you know, um, shows us that we are on the right track. Uh, actually, in this position, uh, I took a very late uh, short, so I'm, I'm only like 70 pips in the money at the moment. But uh, as long as we remain below 72, 30, call it roughly, I'm, you know, I, I still like it and, you know, it, it looks good. Um, so uh, what else is popular? Yeah, having to do with the SPX, nothing has changed here. Uh, obviously, we're seeing this, this today is the seventh day in a row that currently we're trading higher. Um, I don't think there is much strength left to it. Perhaps we're going to get a final push tomorrow. Uh, which is absolutely fine. Um, I'm still short on four handles, uh, almost five handles out of the money. I'm totally fine with it. That's uh, a winner. I, it's a, like I told you yesterday, Steve, be, being down four or five handles, being short at the S&P. I'm a not a scalper. Trade. Five handles is nothing. You know what I mean? I, well, I, I'm, I, I'm saying uh, nowadays that's a winning trade. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're almost right about it, actually. Um, so, yeah, what I'm looking for next uh, is uh, the potential of testing tomorrow uh, this little channel that we have there. 
so that comes at around 2550 so you know a push higher towards there um you know I, i'm absolutely fine with that i'm you know I'm, I'm keeping my position and i'm really looking for at least uh, a back test of this 2485 breakout area uh so um i really think that at least some kind of a corrective move lower uh should start if not tomorrow then very 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 early uh, next week um we've already pushed uh, too far too soon uh, on absolutely no news um so on the other hand um this is also supportive of this what i'm seeing here is the, in the usd yen is you know yeah. you can even oh, view it you can yeah. you can even view it as an ascending wedge if you ignore the weeks so it's it's yeah. a matter of interpretation how you want to see this but regardless we seem to be testing if you see it on a four hour chart as well we seem to be testing support at the moment and you know a break below here first of all we 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 have spent many days being unable to clear this descending trend line this is one sign this is also the 78.6 of this move lower and i'm not saying that you know the the, the pair has turned bearish absolutely not but definitely if we see a lower low so for example a push below uh 11220 I think this that this kind of an interpretation is going to be valid again, which means that I would expect some reaction lower yeah, to yeah. at least yeah to at least get to 11050, 111. You, you know, know, Steve, uh, this view also ties in well with what Nick was saying about treasuries earlier. Oh yeah, definitely a rebound in treasuries. Yes, yes, yeah. that definitely. Uh, I, I wanted to say it, but I didn't want to interrupt here that it bodes well with everything else i mean a, re a rebound in uh, a short term rebound and here we see it and somebody uh, somebody can see that anyhow the treasuries have been testing this low they, they almost did actually we also have this ascending channel so uh, let's be honest um i like this move lower there is no question about it but on the other hand um, there is a lot of support uh, close to where we currently are. So, I mean, we can get a big rebound before actually moving lower. But, uh, you know, the big picture remains that uh, this still looks to me like a long term corrective pattern higher. Um, and I would expect a push below this channel for another low at some point. It doesn't have to be tomorrow, it doesn't have to be the day after. It can be in a month from now because you know uh, we we might get some correction or some some kind of complex pattern uh, because you know often uh, the treasuries and the boons might have a period that they're you know flatlining more or less so um you know we we might get that rebound first though so let let's see what happens with that we definitely haven't broken the support the, i mean the critical support yet which you know which which is important um so what else? Let me see questions actually. It is screaming to test 89.80. That might be uh, the case. Uh, Ibex, sure. I've, I, I'm actually not trading it. I haven't even done any uh, analysis on it, but we can have a look at it. Mm, yeah, okay. Uh, this is the Spanish stock market by the way for those uh, for those that don't know uh, listen i can tell you two things about it first of all I, uh, first of all i can tell you is that it found critical support once again and this looks like a corrective pattern but on the other hand and this is something i know because in general i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm reading a lot of articles so I, I more or less have an idea what's happening uh, you know with most stock markets although i don't trade them or do technical analysis on them there is one thing that somebody can note about it is that everything else has been breaking out, uh, breaking out to new highs while here we remain in a big triangle so if if we look at the big picture of the ibex uh, there's one thing for sure we haven't gone anywhere and yeah. th th this this has been i mean let's be honest here Office. there is no question that this was a bullish move okay and there is also no question that so far this looks like a corrective move which nobody says that it can't move lower 
So this move is impulsive. This move so far looks corrective. So why not? But on the other hand, looking at the big picture, even if that happens, IBEX is definitely have been underperforming the vast majority of the stock indices. So obviously, if you're bullish, you know, there are better places to be bullish than here, right? Okay, Whoever let's breaks have that triangle, it's going to look pretty good. Maybe that's what's kept it pressured is uh, this political uncertainty for all this time. Definitely. And not only, don't forget that Spain has had uh, a lot of political developments and Greece ha as Greece had. I mean, they had a, a lot of elections and uncertainty if the Podemos are going are, are, are to come in... Uh, uh, in power and um, you know what's going to happen with the reforms and now they have the issue about uh, the Catalans want, wanting to separate yeah. uh, and they, they have had one of the weakest banking uh, sectors and they, they have had one of the weakest um, economic recoveries in comparison to other countries so all, all these things you know ha have been uh, weigh weighing on it. Uh, anything like that too in at least Boris not making new highs cuz I mean they're in a similar situation maybe even worse in Spain right with their bank. which country sorry say again in Italy. your roman your roman adversaries it italian one you said yeah yeah oh okay uh no I, I haven't even checked it to be honest i haven't even checked oh, it okay Right. Uh, the Nasdaq, by the way, is also at a critical juncture here. I said it yesterday. I mean, um, yeah. I I wouldn't exclude, you know, a pop here and then a reversal, right? Because it looks strong and it's it's currently testing the line. So, you know, a false breakout would be, you know, would be a very nice uh, signal here as well. Um, the IWM also is, you know, con continuing, its para continuing its parabolic move, but you know, some kind of a pullback at least, at least to retest this broken channel. I mean, you know, this move is already like incredible, incredible for the amount of time. What is it counting? What is it like? 11% higher in one month, something like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's completely nuts. Uh, let's have a look at, at Copper for our friend Arif, by the way, since he's asking about it. Broke out, like showed a weekly. Yeah, okay. Uh, so far, so far, it's playing out nicely. We expected some kind of a reaction from here. We are getting one. Uh, definitely, today's move is like, I mean, it's incredibly strong. I mean, how, how much higher is it? Let me have a look. It's already put 2.3% higher, and this is so far a Marubos white candle. I mean, it's, this is very, very strong. So let's see how the day closes, because don't forget that we still have the possibility of getting something like this, right? Yeah. So, you know, this is make it or break it. So, you know, we got this, we got this. Are we going to get this, another leg lower? Let's see. Uh, I think today is going to be critical. So that's what I think, Arif. I mean, uh, we, we are at a critical juncture here. Let's see if this possibility of a, of a bear flag plays out. So far, today's move looks very strong. I can't deny that. JPY strength, JPY strength, something is going on. Uh, yeah, as I said, the USD yen is currently testing, um, you know, an, an important uh, pattern. Uh, a break lower can definitely bring at least, you know, 100 and 100, 150 pips of weakness. That would also go very nicely with some kind of a reversal. Actually, there are a lot of interesting trades out, out here at the moment. I mean, just if you see the technicals, but knowing that NFPs are uh, literally, uh, you know, um, a few hours, like uh, a day away, I mean, you know, this this actually makes you think twice. So Thank do we you, have Steve. our guest here? Yes. Nice Perfect. review, buddy. Okay. My, my have a nice interview. Thank you very much, Steve. And Chris, I see you. I'm now going to make you the presenter. Look forward to hearing your voice and seeing your screen. Face, welcome Chris Lemieux. Hi, Chris. Hi, how are you? Long time, buddy. How are you? 
Great. How are you doing? I just realized uh, I have interviewed you before. Yeah, it was, um, I think, early last, last year, I believe. Okay. Uh, so, well, welcome to FACE. This is uh, Thank you. The, uh, the best social trading community on the net, in case you didn't know. <laughs> now you do. So, uh, what's on your radar, buddy? Um, really, I, I, I've been looking at uh, gold. Um, it's had a huge move lower uh, since, you know, topping out at around uh 1360 um there's a lot of uh you know talk about um the fed moving in december uh possible uh in regards to a rate hike um they're also uh talking about potentially unwinding uh some of that qe in uh october letting some of those those bonds mature and fall off um now if anybody has followed the Fed throughout this uh, this crazy journey uh, post financial crisis, um, what they tend to do is prep markets for future moves. Um, that's not to say that from now until then they won't change their mind, but what they want to do is provide um, you know price stability in regards to. Uh, risk assets, try and keep those prices as stable as possible. So by giving markets enough time to adjust, they tend to smooth out that volatility. And that's why volatility, you know, is essentially at the lowest levels since, you know, 2007. Um, so, you know, what we'll be seeing, I think, um, from from now until uh, October is the going to start um, you know, increasing their hawkish uh, rhetoric about uh, 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 balance sheet unwinding. They're going to start talking about uh, hiking again in December. And as long as they keep that tone, um, we could see gold lower. Um, we could actually uh, break 1250, potentially uh, retest uh, re 1200 under that scenario. Um, the only, uh, I think, uh, ups uh, upside gold has is if something happens within the markets, maybe volatility picks up um, to where Jenny Yellen feels the need to uh, kind of take back that, uh, that hawkish uh, stance. Um, really, I mean, uh, gold right now, uh, you know, at, at uh, let's see, 1276, uh, you know, on, on the weekly chart, uh, it's trading below uh, 1283, which is uh, my uh, my former uh, support now resistance. I think it could trade as low as 1250. Um, we have seen some dollar strength on the back of uh, the the Fed speak. Um, there is some uh, narrative on uh, President Trump's tax uh, proposal, but. I think it's more to do with the Fed. Um, we've so seen, it could go up or down. Is that what you're saying, Chris? I mean, essentially, because I mean, really, when it comes to interest rate sensitive assets like gold, um, really, the Fed and their stance on policy is really the keystone to where these assets drive. Um, you know, because what I'm thinking is is you see it, it i have a longer term view on gold uh i'm bullish gold longer term um but where would you like to buy it where would i like to buy it yeah sure um well let's see let me i mean you're on. long term bull so if the fed continues uh, uh being hawkish and right. they and they hike in december where do you think it could fall to, and uh, is that a level that you think you're going to step in and do something about it? Well, um, to be honest, I, I, I would like to to uh, uh, buy some at uh, about 12:30. Uh, actually, that is the retest of the downward trend of 2011. Uh, I think we could see some support there, okay. um, and. 
you Would know, you, short, uh, know that, you know, if you do, you think it's a short here for move sell rallies? You know, back to you know twelve eighty, thirteen hundred, looking for that. Yes, I, I, yes, I, I think um, between uh, twelve ninety and thirteen hundred, I think is going to be a challenge, uh, especially with uh, you know the current current dynamics. Um, I think you know psychologically, the market wants to sell rallies. Um, now, uh, you know, just for some some uh, some background, um, I was actually I've been long I've been bullish uh, gold since uh, 1140. I, I I was long in December. I was kind of a contrarian. Uh, I thought gold would have a uh, a great uh, 2017. Uh, so far, it's it's been good. Um, there has been a large retrace, but I think we can see support at these lower levels between 1230 and 1200. Um, even given the the Fed speak, I think the the situations, um, there's a lot of risk. I mean, you got, you got Spain, uh, you got North Korea. Um, President Trump's very unpredictable. Um, he could, uh, you know, do something to rattle the markets. Um, you know, and that kind of keeps me at least uh, one leg in, 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 you know, being long. Um, but, you know, for those short traders, I mean, for those short term traders, I'm more of a long term trader on gold. But those uh, that, that like to trade short, um, short term, I think between uh, 1290 and 1300 is a, a, a good place to uh, enter a short. And I think we could uh, see 12, uh, 1250 between uh, and then 12 12 30. so does your view on the dollar parallel your view on the gold that uh the dollar yes, has I, bottom? I, I, go ahead yeah absolutely um i was i've, I've been uh bearish uh the dollar uh pretty much all of 2017 i i went i went into the year uh negative on the dollar and um when the Fed first began speaking, uh, hinting at potential um, uh, uh, balance sheet unwi unwinding. Um, I knew that that was a scenario where the dollar could um, could rebound. I mean, I mean, in all reality, it, it was down 11% uh, th this year before recently rebounding. Um, you know. Longer, the long term. Um, What's your preferred long against the dollar? Preferred long. Yeah, there are many currencies. You, if you're bearish the dollar, you could, you know, you could like the Canadian against the dollar. You could like the euro. You could like uh, the yen. Uh, what's your mm -hmm. uh, favorite long? What's your most precious currency against the dollar? That's a, good, that's, a, that's a good question. I think um, I would like the yen against the dollar. Uh, reason being is I think um, initially, um, you know, the way I'm looking at interest rates right now, U.S. interest rates, the 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 ten year and the you know the thirty year, the the back end, you know, we saw a huge ramp uh, recently, and that's beginning to fade. I think um, in so longer you're term, bullish, you're bullish the bond market. Therefore, therefore bullish yen. Yes, yeah, yeah, because because I like to play that rate differential, and I think that um, we uh, the dollar yen has been a great proxy for U.S. rates. Yes, so, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so I think and gold. Um, and gold exactly. So I think longer term uh, dollar yen is uh, is a good is is a good bet on uh, rate the rates and the overall uh, if you're just playing the dollar. Okay, so I, I know, uh, you, you know, you've uh, uh, claimed and uh, you were right about the last financial panic in 07, 08. Um, you know, uh, your read, uh, you know, what I gather from you is you're not a real believer in a lot of things that are happening and that it's mainly just uh, maybe the rubber band has stretched further than you thought it would. Where are you at? I'm, uh, stock indices and equities in our current environment at record highs yeah i mean definitely i definitely thought 
that, you know, the whole dog and pony show would have ended sooner. But I mean, central banks. How about really, now though? How about, what do you, what do you think? Uh, is the pony is the pony ready for the glue factory? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I think so. I mean, see, the the problem is is you know, as long as central banks continue, you know, propping that market up, it it is going to keep going higher. I mean, it's just it, unless there's some sort of systemic risk to the markets. I think it's going to drift higher. It's just going to grind higher because there's really no incentive at this point for people just to stop buying because they know that even if there is a little blip in in uh, in stocks, you know, what you know, Bullard's going to come out or you know, somebody's going to say this, and it's always going to be a buying the dip opportunity. I mean, I really, I'm really. Uh, I'm really torn on it because I understand. We gotta be close. We gotta be close when the long-term bears are saying it's just gonna grind up for a while. What do you think? Right. I, I, I mean, mean, even you don't think it can happen any that we could have a bear market anymore. And that and that is a different stance and that you've had for a while. Correct? Right, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean that's what uh, I'm saying. Even the long-term bears are throwing in the towel here. Oh, I, I mean, absolutely, because I mean, it, it, it's hard to it's it's hard to fight. I mean, you know, well, I I'm know my account is uh, definitely you know shown uh, red ink trying to do that. So you know, it's very difficult to do. I actually think that uh, we'll see uh, that we could be um, completing something here up here anyway, Chris. So. Uh, you're more sanguine about the market. Sounds like you have no conviction. Um, how about uh, the oil market? Uh, there are a lot of bears in oil. They're they're thrown in the towel now. You have a view on that? I know that you know it's a very important industrial uh, commodity. And also, I'm wondering what you're thinking. I know you follow fundamental macro events. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I've been I've been reading. Uh, uh, China's about to launch a futures exchange to trade oil in mm -hmm. yuan, okay? And this yeah. is going to be the first deliverable contract of oil in yuan. So uh, could this be part of a de-dollarization that, uh, you know, uh, everyone's paid for oil in dollars up till now. Right. So, so um, could that, it is, it, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say it's definitely leaning that way. I mean, we're seeing more, you know, with the the, the Chinese uh, gold back oil contract, uh, but we're seeing Russia beginning to, you know, kind of step away from the dollar a little bit, Iran. Um, but I, I think that is a much uh, longer term situation unless there is an issue with the dollar confidence because, how about if there's an issue with China uh, not cooperating with uh, sanctions in North Korea, and uh, we go ahead and say you can't use the dollar system with maybe some of their smaller banks? Uh, that could definitely speed up the process. Oh, absolutely. Uh, right now, right now it, it appears that they are supporting the sanctions. Um, you know, they will till it's painful or right. they see people at their border. But uh, the Chinese already have a backup to the SWIFT system, don't they? They do, yes, they, they do. And um, I believe I believe uh, Russia's actually working on, on something as well. I mean, it's definitely a, a trend that's, that's taking hold. I mean, the dollar, you know, although it is still the reserve currency, um, it, it's definitely looking like, um, you know, big economies are looking towards an alternative. I mean, whether that is, um, you know, the, the one or, you know, uh, or, you know, a lot of uh, like um, China and Russia are looking at digital, digital currencies. Um, okay, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. What's your, can you wrap your head around what's happening in crypto? What are your views? Uh, uh, does it remind to me? It kind of reminds me of the dot com bubble. 
Yeah. With all these new IPOs, only their currency IPOs coming right. out. And, and, you know, eventually there was a, uh, you know, meltdown. But, uh, you know, you have things like Apple and Google and everything that rose from the ashes from the dot com crash. Um, maybe governments want to go that way, and that's why they're letting it happen. What do you think? Now, with, you know, as far as Bitcoin and all these other currencies, it, it, it's hard to say whether they'll stand the test of time. I think really what the big um, picture is, I, I think really what, what the, the key um, thing to focus on is, is the technology that surrounds it. Yeah, the blockchain. Um, the block, exactly, exactly. I think that's really what is going to uh, survive. I think because I mean, really, when you look at it, you know, like a Bitcoin and and whatnot, you know, the key. Um, are are blockchains like Legos? Just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, because I mean, if you remember going back before this huge run up. The, the whole focus is this decentralization, um, uh, anonymity, um, you know, deregulated um, currency alternative. But I mean, we're seeing uh, governments issue um, more restrictions on it. Uh, China's cracking down on, on Bitcoin um, because they're trying to stem uh, capital outflows. Um, so I think what we'll see the end game of this is I think these type of digital currencies will um, kind of fall to the wayside because I think governments are going to start stepping in and I think what will eventually happen is they're going to start issuing their own digital currency. That's what um, I mean. You right. Know, so that way they can control it. It's very Orwellian if they do it. Oh, so, uh, absolutely. So, What's the most important thing people have to know going into year end with market positioning here, Chris? Uh, I know you're starting a new website, uh, yes. MacroView, I believe it is. Uh, yes, what are you telling? What are you telling your people to do right now? Really, is this is nothing, this? Yeah, nothing is okay. I mean, you know, cash is a position. No, no, absolutely. And the funny thing is, is um, you know, fund surveys are coming out and. The percentage of funds in cash are actually at all time lows. So, you know, people have never been more invested. And that is kind of a risky situation to be in. Um, I think that it is important to be nimble. It's important to have cash. Um, you know, obviously, every trader, investor, there's, you know, they have their own, you know, set allocation but i mean what cash allows you to do is it allows you to stay flexible and it gives you optionality so when opportunities present itself you can take advantage you know whatever your time frame is whatever your you know your thesis on a particular asset is you know cash allows you to do that i mean if, if you're fully in, invested in you know a, a full book and uh, you, you you don't have that opportunity to buy things when they're on sale okay um, so let me let me ask you to put your uh nostra lemieux hat on okay going in going into year end and yeah. into 2018 what is the one position or trade that you think offers the most potential going forward from this point on and it could be long the dollar short the dollar uh, long S&P, short, long bonds, uh, any instrument, Chris, uh, what what are you laser focused on and looking to exploit? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. Now, um, I, I only ask good questions, buddy. <laughs> um, well, what I would like to do is I would like to um, sell dollar on the rallies um okay. i think that it's going to eventually uh come undone and i would like to stay um uh long uh bonds particularly the the 10 and the 30. um i think the 30 has uh more room to to go lower i, I don't think that the us is going to remain strong economically 
um, simply because I, th there's there's no real trend um, in in growth. I mean, we've had quarters that have outperformed uh, expectations, but they've talent, they, they've slumped over. I mean, if we if we look at inflation, even um, you know inflation, core inflation, which is you know ex volatile stuff like energy and uh, food. I mean, it's sitting at you know 1.4, 1.5%, and it's only gone down. Um, and we saw a, a little blip up in, in in headline inflation, but a lot of that had to do with uh, energy prices because we got hit, you know the U.S. got hit with uh, Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Harvey, which shut down you know refinery production and and, and gas really really jumped. It jumped about 20%. And uh, so I think what we're going to do, uh, what we're going to see is as refineries come on and as you know energy prices start to normalize we're going to see we're going to start to see inflation dip lower and if inflation starts to dip in lower um we're going to see uh i think we're going to see a, a move lower in yields which is you know obviously but uh beneficial to bonds okay so uh, uh i would sum it up that your uh, u.s dollar yen bull uh which makes sense if you're constructed the long end of the treasury curve mm -hmm. and if we get a nice dollar rally you want to remain short and sell into it uh, and your long-term gold bull and yep. you've given up the bear case that uh, stock indexes will ever correct 10 percent again well I, I mean i wouldn't say that i mean because see th th this is this is how i approach stocks um in, in my opinion there are tradable opportunities but at, 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 absolutely but at these valuations i'm not I, I don't see investment opportunities really i mean what i want to see is is a big correction to really put money to work uh in in equities um, you and the whole cosmos <laughs> right exactly i mean if that ever okay. happens yeah you know what if it does happen pitch it after it bounces because, you know, uh, I think the whole world's going to be looking for, you know, a five, 10 percent correction and maybe we get a rally from there. People mm -hmm. like it. But if it's going to if it's going to let people in, I'd be a little cautious about letting people in, getting in too early if it starts to open that door. Right. That's my view. And I'm just a blind squirrel in the middle of a <laughs> snow covered forest on a moonless night wearing my shades. Looking, right. All right. Looking for a few nuts, Chris. So exactly. Uh, I, we all are. Yeah. So you know, I want to wish you uh great success. Thank you. With your new website. What's the best way for viewers and people to watch a video later to get a hold of you and get on your list for the launch of your website and uh, what's the mission of the website, buddy? Sure. Um, you know, for those that are interested, you can go to macroview.co. Um, from there, you can enter your, your email address and, you know, we will then, uh, put you on a list and we will, we will, um, you'll be the first, uh, updated once we go live, which, uh, is just a matter of weeks now. Um, what we aim to do is provide, you know, non-biased, you know, no narrative uh, research and strategy to help people uh, navigate the markets. I mean, we don't want to tell you what you want to hear. We just want to tell you what the data suggests and the best way to, to go about that. Well, I hope pips rain down on you, Chris. Thank and you. Thanks, you thanks for taking the time, my trading warrior brother, for dropping in and talking to face today. Great, thanks for having me. All right, partner. Good haunting on the NFP and uh, face, that's it. Thank you viewers at investing.com for joining us today. You may wanna check out our trial. It's a buck for 10 days to look at Nick's harmonics. You saw her today, Blake and Steve and Greg a little under the weather, one of the best Elliotitians uh, on the net. So uh, see you own it, see your face, and remember most of all, my friends, money comes and goes, time is gone forever, make it count, and don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone for the NFP tomorrow. Have your battle gear on.
Nice to meet you, Nick. Adios.